All right, boys, today we got Fancy versus Tamir in the Madden 25 Ultimate Kickoff Challenge. And uh, this is this is going to be a nice little game because Tamir runs some off meta. He runs U trips. He's been running U trips for years. Been pretty good in this formation. And then Fancy is kind of unveiling. This is the one of the first times you'll see in the competitive circuit this year. You will see a different defense than Double Mug. Fancy is going to be unveiling the Dollar formation. And at this point in the year, Dollar was. A good defense, but wasn't a great defense, and Fancy is going to show kind of what makes this defense special, so a lot to learn from this video, and at this point coming into this tournament, I think this is Tamir's first live event, and as I said, he's going to be in the U-Trip, so now Fancy is going to be in the Colts book starting on offense, and then also one of the other things that you're going to see is Tamir is going to be in the 3-3 Cub defense. So a lot to learn from this video. I've got 3-3 um, three, three Cub and Dollar and Colts offensive and defensive ebooks on our school community if you guys want to check that out. And we are going to be adding in this 3-3 three, three Cub. Now, he runs a baseline. I don't run a baseline, so kind of just going to be testing, kind of see uh, what he's doing defensively, see what we can learn from. That was actually crazy. I think Fancy was trying to throw – I don't know what he was trying to throw. He might have been trying to high ball or slide or what. Somehow he pitches it back to the tackle. I'm very fortunate that he's able to get the ball. Again, a lot you can learn from the first drive. You're going to see a lot about what their strategy is, what their base coverage shells is, things of that nature. Um, so you're going to see the thing that makes 3-3 Cub really, really good is the coverage behind the blitz. The blitz is okay, um, but the coverage behind the blitz is why you would want to be in a defense like 3-3 Cub. It's really good for running um, double Mabel. It's really good for running just the safeties come down to the box really well, uh, has some match coverage in it. So it's a very it's a very versatile defense. Fourth and twelve, kind of a big down to start out. You never want to get stopped on your first drive, and obviously Fancy is kind of running the risk of that here. Notice that Tamir is flipping that three three cub every single time. This is why I would not run at baseline because I think it's super hard to play against a flip bunch. But we'll see kind of what he's doing. A little motion out with the speed out. This is one of the main combos that you're seeing a lot. Throws his crosser high points, catches it in traffic and able to get that possession catch. Again, Fancy's going to be in double post. A lot of people have kind of moved on from Colts at this point, but um, I think Colts does still have some value. You might see Colts make a comeback later on in the year as well. So Colts is always going to be a really good offense um, as long as they leave double post and smash return and, and all that. As long as they leave the bunch offset as is, it's going to be one of the better offenses in the game. They're a little return route from the bunch drawing nasty. A couple new plays added. Here should be an audible to trips. I want to go over this real quick. This is kind of Fancy's main red zone combo. You see, when he gets to about this area of the field and in, you're going to see a lot of trips. He's got really two combos that you see him run a lot. The first one is going to be tight and in with a streak, a C route, a tight and in, a drag, and a wheel. Okay. So, what we're really looking for is the C route. Or if they switch stick to the C route, maybe looking at that in route or the backside drag. So we'll see kind of how this play looks. Looks at that C route, good defense by Tamir. And it does look like Tamir is running a lot of cover two on the trip side. You see here cover two on the trip side. He's also rolling that safety into an outside third. That's another thing that is really good out of 3-3 Cub is that you can turn on, I believe it's the uh, safety nickelback package, and you can get these guys to go into thirds. So you see third here cloud he throws right at it that might have been a half instead of a third he didn't get as much to the sideline but the reason why you want those thirds is those thirds on those safeties are going to do a little bit better job at defending deep corner routes um, and things like that here fancy going to bunch wide a lot of new honestly a lot of new formations that we haven't really seen called a ton uh, that are getting called a lot more and that was a nice little cover two beater so right here he was noticing the, the short side deep half and if that was an outside third that would have played that, the seam streak might have been available. But in general, Fancy's going to get on the board first. And I want to get into kind of Tamir's offense and Fancy defense. I feel like that's where the main matchup is going to be. Um, I don't think Tamir's known as a great defensive player. He's a unique defensive player, given that he's always going to be in 3-3 Cub pretty much from what I've seen. And, uh, I mean, he's been in 3-3 Cub probably since Madden 21. If I don't even know if he played back then, but uh, anyway – Fancy is in dollar, uh, and he, in my opinion, has at this point in the year probably is the best defensive player with switch stick. 
and Tamir running kind of a unique offense, U trips. So a lot to learn from this. We'll see kind of what he's going to do. One of the things Tamir is going to do a lot is he's going to call this play tight end deep out or tight end um, or Y option wheel. And basically, you're going to just put this tight end on a corner route and quick hike a lot. That's going to be one of his main route combos. It's been one of his main route combos for years. A little halfback base, bad cut by him, not be able to get that first down. Puts him in a third and two situation. Now, another thing that's real quick to point out about fantasy's defense is when you're on the right hash, this blitz is really good. We found this like the first day the game was out. This is probably one of the best blitzes in the game this year. Okay, it's hard to block when you're on this hash mark specifically. Now, if the ball's over here, this blitz is not as effective, and there's some other blitzes that have, are in this formation. So, again, third and two, got to have a down key situation. We'll see what Tamir goes to on this situation. You see a little flat. And take a look at this route combo. These are the combos that you have in U-Trips. You get this a lot. This is a tight end whip route. It's something that's stocked to this formation. You can't hot route this. You have a clear out. You have this post. And then we're using a flat as like a snap read. And then we have this, this little curl to the running back. Now, the way this defense should shape up to play your, your user is going to be put in a conflict. He's going to either have to defend this or he's going to have to defend this tight end whip. So that's kind of what, what we're looking at here in terms of coverage. Motion out there. You see, look, there's the flat. Hard flat takes that hard flat uh, or takes that flat route. You see here, send five. That's going to come in pretty consistently, as you see. And then take a look here at this. There's nowhere to go with the ball. This is going to be a throwaway. It's actually a really good throwaway because if you don't throw this away, you know, you're looking at a fourth and 14 as opposed to a fourth and two. This is another reason why over the last couple of years, we've seen a trend continue to develop in Madden. It's partially due to the way the offensive line is, is kind of coded within the game. But it's also, I think, significant that you're seeing these A-gap blitzes are really difficult because the pressure gets up into the A-gap. And so the quarterback can't get away from it. So that's another thing that is, is super impressive um, about about the defense right now. So you see here, this time able to pick up the blitz. Now we have a flat, probably a wheel route of some sort. And then we have, there's that, there's that tight end corner. He loves throwing this. He'll throw this in between zones a lot. He's pretty much mastered throwing this route, able to throw that right there. And actually kind of a bad throw. I think Will Levis probably gets that in with Gunslinger, one of the newer quarterbacks, but Jaden Daniels lofts the ball a little bit and uh, just doesn't get a good pass lead, ended up getting a KO um, or just a knockout in general. There's Wide Trail. Great switch stick by Tamir. Um, great switch stick. Probably should have been a pick right there. And, again, you're just seeing how valuable switch stick is. If you understand and you can – it's it's, ser it's seriously like – it's probably the it's, – it's definitely the feature of the year defensively. And the more that I've been thinking about switch stick, it truly has changed everything about offense and defense because it's a completely different game plan. You're no longer trying to put out like your coverage adjustments. What you really want from a coverage, you kind of want like a basic coverage, like a basic cover two, basic cover three, basic cover four, maybe a roll coverage. You're not going to do a lot of crazy stuff with your coverage adjustments anymore because of the fact that you want to be able to switch it quickly. Um, there, that's a high point. This is why high points need to be patched. His user's right in position to be able to make a play. The high point prevents him from making a play, and he can't even knock the ball out. And now we got a first and goal situation. So. In general, you're starting to see early in this game some of the big picture takeaways from this tournament. One of them being switch stick. You have to understand switch stick. You have to have a strategy behind your switch stick. You have to have a strategy for how to beat switch stick offensively. Another big strategy is these high boy high points. Um, you you can high point if you ever if something looks a little scary, just try high pointing it. A lot of times that'll be in. And then uh, both players are actually in a baseline based defense and specifically, you know, the idea of disguising everything is, is super important. So there we go, third and goal, kind of got to have it down situation. Derrick Henry breaks a tackle, and that's why you run the ball inside the five. Kind of just free touchdown, not really having to work too hard. You you know, you're seeing a lot of these top players, and this has been something that's been true of, in, over the last four years. You get down here in the red zone, you want to be running the ball. You want to be trying to run the ball in. You don't want to be trying to pass down here. The more the space gets compressed, the more difficult passing becomes. So we want to try to just run the ball in if they'll let us. And so forcing him to stop the run in that situation. Here we go. Uh, starting now with the halfback power. Now you might be asking, you know, why is he running the ball 
all the time on the first down because U trips is a very hash dependent offense. You want to be on a hash. You really don't want to be passing with this formation in the middle of the field because it really hurts the spacing of the formation. So you're going to see consistently Tamir is going to be running the ball to try to get on a hash um, if possible. Here we go. Another combo. Let's take a look. we got that flat wheel. I love that combo. It's a great – Great little route combo. One of the things you'll notice with U-Trips, this is, um, and it's called YF Trips Pass, but everybody calls it U-Trips because that's what it used to be called. One of the other things you're going to notice with this formation, and you see consistently there's that double team, now gets on that hash. One of the things you'll notice with this formation is the spacing from U-Trips is really, really, really effective. And the way this game is played with the power of switch stick, having an offense like this is a significant advantage. Because it's hard to switch stick. The more the more areas of the field you attack, the harder it is to just sit and switch stick on certain things. So you're seeing this is basically a spread set, especially with this motion over and things like that. There's the running back. You see he's you he switch sticked onto the post. Running back's wide open underneath. So there you're actually seeing, I think, a really good match between between someone that's mastered the best defensive feature in the game, which is switch stick, and then the one offense that I would think it's probably got one of the better abilities to counter switch stick because of the spacing that the formation provides. Now, again, one of the things that I think is Tamir's ultimate kryptonite within U trips is he's quick. He's going to quick snap a lot. It's hard to quick snap dollar because the defense is kind of already set up for you. And so that's another kind of underrated thing. So take a look here real quick at this combo. We have a flat, we have a post, we have a clear out streak. So if you switch stick onto the third to try to bite down, you can throw this. And then we have this backside drag. And then the running back can be on a lot of different things. A lot of times he'll be on a wheel route. Another thing you're noticing is Tamir is pretty consistently sending out five. He's not really blocking anybody. He's consistently sending out five. There you see, good read. And you're seeing, I mean, the space of the formation is making it rather difficult to consistently play, play defense. Now, Fancy still has a 14-0 lead. One of the things that I think is important to also understand about the way that I believe defense should be played in Madden 25 is bend but don't break, making them work, not giving up the big plays, those forcing these longer drives where it's, you know, 5, 10, 50, you know, ideally over 10 play drives. That is, I think, a good formula for playing defense because – you're going to increase the likelihood that your opponent's going to make a mistake. You're going to force them to have to pass the ball or at least score in the toughest area of the field possible, which is inside the 10 yard line. And you're also going to give yourself a chance for a shed. See here, you give up a, a big play like that. And this is the first time I think in this entire game that fancy sends five. And I don't love this decision. He was playing pretty decent defense. Maybe he just didn't feel like he, I don't know if he just didn't feel like he was, or if he was just trying to take a chance we send DB fire here, and there's just so many holes in this coverage. Now, Fancy does try to switch stick. It's a good play call by Tamir as well, but he's trying to switch stick to this and take this away, but a little too little too late, not able to do it, and Tamir is going to get on the board for seven. It's a big touchdown. Uh, Tamir going for two, I don't understand this decision, um, and just, and I don't also definitely don't understand the base call there. Uh, we know that Fancy's probably going to come prepared with a gap shoot, most of these guys, when you get to this level, you know how to stop the run. You know how to gap shoot the run. Um, so I'm kind of just surprised at that decision. I'm kind of, and I'm also really surprised at that defense play call by Fancy. I felt like he was playing good defense. Tamir was having to work, having to go to his third, his fourth, his fifth read, and then we just kind of gave up a, a big play over the top. So anyway, starting out a little bubble screen out of RPO alert bubble trips. There's that same in that real quick. That's the same exact broken tackle animation that we saw in College Football 25. It's in Madden 25. The games are very, very, very similar. So things that are going to work on both generation or both both games generally. So anyway, just want to make that little point. Flat streak. Love this combo. We don't see that combo a lot out of Colts. That's the wide trail. Stem down the corner out all the way. Flat the outside guy. Drag the tight end. Streak the back. Reason that's good is because it's good against man. But then that corner and flat, pull the flats out, and then the running back can get up into that seam area of the field. Looks like Fancy's going to go to tight open in this situation. I don't know what he's going to – is he just taking – I don't know what he's doing. Super delay audible. Super delayed audible. I don't know why. Looking for this against cover two on his left side. He's going to have that corner route, misses that read, and then said we're going to throw into the 
Double coverage, but it's still open. Velas Jones. Now, situationally, a little bit of clock management. Notice that Fancy did put two clock on. I do feel like he's a little too far down the field to start to clock. That must have been why he was taking some time at that play call. And he, but, but see, that's where like you need to call that play at one second because now look at this. Now you cost yourself a couple seconds by not calling that at one second, not the last play, but the play before. He doesn't call that at one second. So now he can't take all this down to the two minute warning. So there, it's just a, a little bit of a, it's a small little mistake, but it's a clock management mistake. Here he's going to go to this route combo. Why go to this route combo? Because he's not trying to score, he's just trying to kind of keep the offense moving. A little scramble there. That's going to get us to the two-minute warning. And now he's in a third and six situation, which is another, I think, reason why just a poor clock management decision, I think, on his part. If you would have waited like three more seconds, he would have been able to take it all the way down to the two-minute warning. There's that return route. Good throw to that post, and he's going to be forced to score. And really that was, you know, Tamir probably playing that, wanted him to throw that because now Tamir is going to have the opportunity – to be able to try to go down and get seven. And then the other big thing to remember here is that Tamir does get the ball coming out of halftime. So he's going to get the ball coming out of halftime. So if he goes down and he gets a touchdown and then he gets the ball out of half and goes down and gets a touchdown, now we're in a tie game, even though it looks like Fancy's in complete control of this game. So it's a huge drive in the course of this game. Tamir started every single drive out with a little halfback power. Five carries, 21 yards. I think that's the five six trap that he's running out of U-trips. Again, primary purpose probably to get on a hash, but also seems to have a decent amount of uh, yardage with that. There's that switch stick. There's that and that. That was bad. That was on. That could have went really bad. Probably, honestly, the best case scenario just happened with the basic penalty and, a, and an incompletion and putting him in a third and seven situation. That could have been a fumble. That could have been a pick. That, a lot of things could have gone wrong right there. So very fortunate for him that he's able to kind of keep keep things as wanted. A little motion over. Um, this is a combo that's been really good. This is a streak. Here we have a backside drag. We'll take a look at what this guy is. He's on a streak. So this is the double streak combo out of tight end whip. It's actually kind of a unique little play here. We got this dig, this late dig, the double streak here. What this is going to do is this third is going to typically go in here, and you can throw this R1 receiver on the sideline. And then if you're not playing hard flats, which he wasn't there, you're able to just throw the running back. Still brings up a fourth down situation. This I got to have it down for Tamir. You got to convert this fourth down. We'll see what he goes to on this for a conversion. Probably going to be, let's see what he goes to, Y option wheel. Oh, my gosh, busted coverage everywhere. Fancy was really trying to get that. Now, one of the, I guess, a little thing there, also kind of similar to what Tamir did the previous situation, Fancy goes with an all-out blitz trying to get that big stop. If he doesn't get that big stop, though, now Tamir is in a situation where it's kind of dicey. He's going to try to clock this, but it is going to be a, a little bit more difficult to clock than having all that space to be able to work with. Fancy is going to start calling his timeouts, trying to force the issue, trying to get that ball back to put himself in a position to score three. So there is some strategy behind why you would get really aggressive with your coverage versus why you wouldn't get very aggressive with your coverage. But Tamir, with this run, has kind of shown one of the weaknesses of Dollar, which is run defense, and he's been able to consistently run the ball against this formation. And so, you know, he's he's kind of, you know, patting back and – and now he's in a situation here where Fancy has no more timeouts. He's in complete control. And this is kind of he's set up to do what I said, where he's able to score here, get the ball coming out of halftime, and be able to potentially get himself uh, into the end zone and get the game tied up. Fancy going to 4-3, even 6-1, uh, goes off sides. And Tamir's going to score, kind of surprised by him scoring there. But I think he, I, maybe he just feels, I don't know why you would do that. Because he went down before, but he is going to score. And now now this is why, you know, the go for two thing. Now he's in a situation where he kind of has to go for two again. See what he ends up doing here. Um, a bunch of slant routes. And just going to run it in with, Jan with Daniels. There you go. All right. So now pressure si significantly shifts back to fancy because Tamir gets ball at halftime. 48 seconds is a lot of time in this game, especially with the way the clock is this year. And then also, but there is no timeouts. So Fancy probably is thinking three here, maybe seven, but probably three. Um, and then Tamir is but maybe potentially trying to get Fancy to get into a turnover, um, trying to get him to maybe force something 
Uh, but yeah, I mean that's open, easy, and really good read by Fancy there. Able to read the switch tick and able to expose it with the post. So 38 seconds left, and again, notice the clock when you if you go no huddle, there's a runoff. But if you come out in the like if you go back to the huddle, come out in the play, there's a glitch in the game where there's no runoff and there's no clock loss. So you'll see he'll go out in the huddle, look at that 28 seconds, it's still 28 seconds. Had he gone no huddle, it would have been 10 seconds, 12 seconds. So that's another reason why I think it's, you know, it's it's very easy to get down the field quick in this game because of that, um, as long as obviously you're ultimately executing your plays. But 15 seconds, situationally, this is kind of Fancy's mission accomplished, in my opinion. Getting that field goal is a key thing um, because it keeps him ahead of the game. It keeps him in that one possession lead. Even if Tamir does come out after half and score, now we're trying to go for a kill, kill shots here with verticals trying to catch him in a bad defense. There's a tight end. Not there. Notice Tamir sending a little bit more pressure, trying to kind of force Fancy into a turnover potentially. But the send five out of Cub is pretty decent. And the reason why it's decent is because if you don't block, if you block, it's not hard to pick up. But if you don't block anybody, the pressure from 3-3 Cub does come in pretty quickly. It's one of the quicker, uh, one of the quicker blitzes in the game. And the way Tamir's running is a little different than the way I would run it. And it was dagger. So notice here, notice here real quick, this is huge clock management wise. So he's on a fourth down. There's seven seconds. He just goes to field goal and look at this. He's going to be able to kick this with plenty of time because there's – so if you think about it in a real game scenario, all the players ran off the field, all the players ran onto the field within no seconds passing, elapsing whatsoever. Kind of an interesting glitch that they allowed him to competitive Madden, and as far as I know, that is still not fixed. So anyways, on to the second half. All right, guys, on to the second half here, Fancy and Tamir. And Tamir does get ball out half. Fancy sends four a ton. I might have been a send five actually there. And that was, there's that watch with that post. A big play for Tamir coming out of the gate. And this is this is a huge drive because again, the reason you know the, the, the drive before half was big. This is pretty much equally as big. It's not quite as big of a deal, but it, it is a key drive here. Because if Tamir can score here, now we put a lot more pressure on Fancy to have to be better on offense. And it gives Tamir a good chance to get back in this game. He would basically be back in the game if he's able to score right here a touchdown uh, and make it 21-24. A little halfback power. Um, goes to that twice. Fancy starting to show a little bit more of a priority in being able to consistently stop this run play. Uh, left hash dollar is definitely where you want to be passing. You know, you want to be passing on the left hash against dollar as a general principle. Take a look at what we have here. Flat. There's the wheel, switch stick, and that should have been an interception. Notice this is what I was talking about about U trips. Fancy has a really good switch stick. He switch sticks here. I think this is a third. The read is right here, but look, you're just getting just enough pressure. He kind of has to throw into this. As you see, this is coming wide open over the middle. There's not a chance in the world that he stops it. And we throw right into a ton. And this is, I mean, gosh, that's, you know, able to be stopped. So fourth and eight, this is a decision here. Do you kick? If you kick, you stay in the game. If you don't get this, you kind of lose the game. I mean, that, you don't lose the it, – it's hard to say you ultimately lose the game because there's so much time left. But you put yourself in a very, very big disadvantage of a situation because basically you wasted your possession out of half – um, he is going to go for this. This is a huge down in this game. And notice that Fancy does something that we haven't seen a lot of. He goes to what a lot of people will call the Des D. Des does this a lot on like big downs like this. Essentially, he's going to try to get a four-man shed here. And then typically, these guys are going to be in clouds. And then there's going to be some type of like cover three, cover three with two yellows. Um, it's just a hard defense to beat over the top for anything. So you see there's that, and then we're protecting the sticks typically as well. And then again, you see here, these guys are rolling into the thirds. Fa say, somehow Fancy's in the middle of the field on the middle third. And Tamir's going to throw that, and that's a great read in that situation. When you see someone go to that defense, it's almost always that kind of coverage. So Tamir, a little predictable. Uh, the main thing that that defense is really relying upon 
is a good shed. If it gets a good instant shed or that's where it becomes very difficult to beat, it's essentially just a Tampa 3 type of coverage, Tampa 2 type of coverage with the middle third there. And then we're just trying to get that shed quick, force you to throw like a drag. Tight end whip, good switch stick. Another, and that was a pick. Wow. Wow. On the heels of a huge play like that, he throws a, he throws, it's the second time he did that in this game. This time it didn't work out as good as it did the first time. It's an interception. And now Fancy has the ability to kind of, this is basically a put away drive. If Fancy can go down and get th uh, seven, I mean, look at this. I think he's trying to slide here. I really, I don't know if he is or not, but I think he's trying to slide. I don't know what he's trying to do. When he steps across the line of scrimmage, I just don't know what he's, maybe he sees this. I don't know. But he, he tries to make a play way too late. This is the second time he did it. This time it's a pick. It's not just a flag. I mean, just a terrible – it's just a terrible decision. And ultimately, you can't do that consistently and get away with it, you know. Double post, kind of an old-school combo. High-low on the left side, had the, had the C route. Look at the sheds of 3-3 Cub, another significant advantage of the 3-3 Cub defense. It does shed really well, um, so you're going to get good sheds out of it. Just the way they rush, the angles of the blitzes, they do a really good job at shedding. Little uh, post, return route, seam streak. Madden 25, probably the best seam streaks we've seen in a while, um, and just in terms of how the zones just really don't play seam streaks very well. Flip double post, streak on the left side. Another instant shed. Notice this again. And I, he might be sending five. Oh, he's just sending four. This is just a send four. And look at the sheds. That's almost instant pressure. And it's not It's not a blitz. It's not really a blitz. It's just a, a shed. You're getting that instant shed. And because everybody's basically one-on-one -on -one due to the front, it makes it super, super good. So just kind of keep an eye on that as well. And the motion out, stem corner, a lot of this. There you see. There it is. There we get an instant heat. Throws the corner, good read under pressure. Uh, I mean, you're seeing. I mean, this this Cub defense is 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 really well. It's really doing a lot of good stuff for Tamir. Just can't quite get the stop that he needs. There you see there. See another instant shed. Stepped up in the pocket. Good step up. Good run. Second and one. And again, what what I'm what I would almost I don't know exactly the crash, but. I, th I would assume he's crashing outside. Yeah, crash outside. This also allows an easy gap shoot, so it's hard to run on this. It's really hard to run on 3-3 Cub. 3-3 Cub and 6-1 are very similar. They're both really hard to run on. They both get really good sheds, and you can get some really nice edge heat with these backers. There you go. Not open. I mean, kind of open, but able to get the KO or a... Catch, uh, catch knockout. Bunch wide, a little motion. Go to wide trail. He loves this motion out streak. Why is he doing this a lot? Because there's a lot of cover two over here. And that was a great read. I don't know what that linebacker was on, but it was not the right adjustment. And Fancy's able to go up 31 to 14. And you see how big of a shift this game just took. It went from very, very could have possibly been 21 to 24 Fancy's ball to now 31 to 14. And now Tamir basically fighting to stay in the game by, you know, really needing it. This is a got to have it, need a touchdown drive here. The other two drives were, in my opinion, like very critical for getting back into the lead. Now we're just trying to stay alive in the game and be able to play the game through. Um, because if he gets stopped on this drive, this is this is really hard to you know you're basically done at that point. So he starts out halfback power. I think that's how he started every single drive. A little flat crosser streak, old school combo. Don't see that a lot anymore, but still really good. Let's take a look here. Flat. That's another thing U trips does really well. It threatens the flats on both sides quick. So it's hard sometimes if you're not playing consistently hard flats. Uh, to be able to, now we're in trips. Have, I don't know why we're in this. I don't know why we want to bubble screen on second and two in this situation. Just kind of an odd play call. You know, I, I, sometimes I've always been just surprised at these MCS games, and they start doing stuff that they just don't do, like in in real in the regular game. Good flat, 
Good flat, good read, get the first. 31-14. I'd love to see an out route here and put some stress over here. I don't know why we haven't done that yet. Scramble out. Brings up a second and nine situation. But, I mean, this <laughs> you're seeing now, wait, watch how fancy he's calling defense, too. This is the best form of dollar. Look at what it is. It's a send four. You got a hard flat, hard flat. It's hard. You can't, you can't, um, you can't just, I mean, you just, the windows are hard to throw. It's hard to throw these windows. Like this throw right here, wall open and wall a good read, that's not going to kill you, right? It's not going to kill you. It's another thing that Dollar is super underrated that Dollar does. It actually puts them all the way back to 30 inches. Dollar keeps the game in front of you. It's another reason why I love the defense. Um, there's a nice free safety zone blitz, gap shoot. He breaks 15 tackles, gets a first, and that's going to take us to the fourth. So put your fours up. See what they can see what Tamir can do on this drive to get back in this game. Good switch stick, trying to take that away. Kind of baits there. Get a little playmaker late. There's a lot going on right there, but he is able to complete that post. That was kind of just a broken play, honestly. All right, so kind of a broken play. It brings up this goal line situation. 6 1 for fancy. Stretch. It's good spin move. Not able to finish the run. Ricky Williams is playing really good for Tamir, though, I will say. Uh, single back. Oh, also, uh, I didn't say this yet. Patriots playbook for Tamir. So Colts playbook for fancy. Patriots playbook for Tamir. Defensively, um, Tamir's probably in the multiple playbook or the Vikings playbook. Fancy is in, I think, the Texans playbook. All right, third and goal. Got three left side. Kind of that same two-point play. Nothing really there. Going to have to throw it away. And this is this is it. This is fourth down. This is pretty much the ball game. You have to score here. You don't score here. It's, it's pretty much, I mean, it's done. Very, very difficult to win this game if you don't score here. Got this. I don't know what the motion streak is supposed to do. Tight end whip. Get an overthrow. That sucks. Really unfortunate for Tamir. Gets that overthrow. And now Fancy's going to be able to take over. Now, Fancy is in a precarious position. He needs to get out of this position of the field for sure. Um, goes to a really, honestly, kind of surprising call. Able to get the completion, but honestly kind of a surprising call. Not a, not a super conservative call right there. Just with that double post with the streak, have the C route, able to hit the C route. Uh, I would have, you know, maybe wanted to see something like what he's about to do right here where he's going to go to inside zone, just try to get some yardage. Again, another thing, and, and I'm going to be a little it, – it's not a huge criticism because obviously a lot of things we've learned from Fancy, and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of his, um, especially the way he plays defense. I've just noticed the last couple of um, – just this throughout this game – why are we not snapping the ball at, at zero seconds, you know, or one second? You know, he he's just – he's kind of – I don't know why. Maybe that's just he doesn't want to give – he doesn't – and see, here he's going to do it. He's going to take it all the way down. But see, like, even just taking it – I just don't know why he does that. Um, I feel like I, – I mean, I just feel like it's a little thing, but it did make a big difference at the halftime deal. Kind of opened the door, I think, for, you know, a, a little bit of a comeback. So just something in general that if you wanted to tighten anything up – Probably that right there. Uh, love this route combo. This is probably the meta route combo of the year out of out of bunch. Is this just streak, stem down corner, uh, post, and then a backside return and whip or a drag. Kind of a gets out of there, gets a broken play, and a little playmaker. And now, you know, this is just full clock. Full clock, finish the game well. Everything should be snapped at one second. Going to do that here. It's a break and tackle. This Ricky Williams is, is really good. <laughs> and then that should take us to the two or very close to the two. Now it doesn't really matter. I mean, now you can do whatever, but not able to get it to the two. Goes with a power. It gets a, a really – that did not work out well. Let's go bunch. Going into tight. Go to trips here. So he's only call he really only calls trips in the red zone or when he wants to run the RPO. A little inside zone, broken tackle. Ricky breaks so many tackles. Brings up a fourth and one. 
go for this here because if you get it, um, I mean, obviously you can just take more clock. Not in a huge. I mean, the game is over if you if effectively over. Um, Tamir's probably saving his timeouts because if he can go down and get seven, get a stop, get onside, Tamir's going to need you know multiple onside kicks probably to win this game. It does look like Fancy's going to go ahead and punt this, just kind of make it making it more difficult on Tamir, not trying to let him back in the game. I don't mind that decision either way. I can understand going for it. I can understand punting it. The punt ultimately is is like a 15 yard punt. I think he. Didn't get a great punt there. But, you know, now we're back into this situation again. Just this this dollar defense, you have that's why I like it, is it and there you see there's an intentional, you know, you it does a really good job the way, especially the way fancy's running it, consistently just sending four, not really getting too aggressive with the blitzing aspect of the defense. It just consistently will shed, it will give you um it, it gives you the best coverage in the game. And so, because they cover, you can cover the entire field well, you can really make the make them work, make them play left-handed. You can take stuff away with Dollar, um, force the underneath throws, force the underneath throws, get them into these fourth and fives, fourth and sevens, third and fives, um, and and can potentially you know make a play that way. Obviously, it's also I think you know once you get them on the right hash, which is going to ha- inevitably happen throughout a course of a game. The right hash is very difficult to deal with this dollar defense. Um, the, the pressure is really effective from it. There you see there's another. Uh, and he actually did end up catching that. It almost looked like he dropped it there. Oh, he did drop it. All right. Well, Fancy is going to wrap this game up with a couple kneel downs. Tamir's not even going to call his timeouts. Well, thank you for watching the video. And if you guys want to check any of my books out there in our school community, school.com slash Cody Ballard, you get everything for 10 bucks. By being a member over there, all of our college football and Madden offensive and defensive ebooks.